Welcome to Bethel Today. I'm Pastor Kyle, and we're just so happy that you're checking out our online experience today. Uh, we just want to take a quick moment to read our church devotional together. It says this, uh, from Ephesians 4, to 24. It says, Throw off your old sinful nature and your formal way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. It also says, Receiving a new life in Christ is and tossing away the old life is very liberating. Put on your new life, wear it, and walk in it. You're calling as God's child, created to be like Him. You know, when we accept Jesus into our life, His Holy Spirit comes and resides in us. And His Holy Spirit helps us change our attitudes and our thoughts and the way that we act and do things. And so that is embracing our newness, our new character, our new life. So when we rely on Him and we spend time with Him, we look more like Christ each day. Would you pray with me this morning? God, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. God, that when we are saved, that you put your stamp on us, and that's the Holy Spirit coming inside of us and, and taking a home in our heart. And so, God, we just pray that you open our, our, our mind and our inner ears to hear your Spirit when He speaks to us. And for those moments where we want to revert back to our old ways, but we remember that we are new in you today. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you for your love. And we just pray over this service as we honor and worship you. Amen. God bless you. There is coming a day when no heart shall come no more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eye all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day glorious day What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see When I look upon His face The one who saved me by His grace When He takes me by the hand And leads me What a day, a glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more pain. glorious day that will be What a day, 
glorious day that will be. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he.
Well, good morning, church. Welcome. I trust you're having a great weekend. Thank you for joining us today for our online service. The church is often referred to as a body, a family, or a flock. Not a flock of geese or goats, but a flock of sheep. The world claims we come from monkeys, and at times raising my kids, I have had reason to believe that. However, over and over in Scripture, we are referred to as sheep. I'm not so sure I like being compared to a sheep for a number of reasons. They are not the most magnificent, brightest, or beautiful of creatures. They are dumb and dirty, timid, defenseless. They get lost very easily, and they get hurt easily as well. Literally, they don't know enough to come in out of the rain. They have these tiny little legs and a small head, which to me equals a small brain. Attached to the head and legs is this large body, and they seem to be somewhat out of proportion. Sounding more like us all the time, don't you think? Jesus' analogy is not that bad after all. Well, Psalm 23 makes reference to the relationship between the sheep and the shepherd. And more people, Christian or not, have turned to this passage to find comfort and hope in difficult times. It is read at bedsides, recited at funerals, put in cards, found on plaques, earmarked or underlined in many Bibles. Allow me to lead you through it today. But let us pray before we begin. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for for your provision. I pray that you would continue to lead us as individuals and as a flock. And I pray, God, we would follow you willingly. In Jesus' name, amen. I have taken these six verses today in Psalm 23 and broken them down into about nine sections. So follow me as I go through this. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or the Lord is my shepherd... I have everything I need. A substitute teacher asked his class one day if anyone could recite the 23rd Psalm. A number of hands went up, and a little girl as well put her hand up. The teacher was impressed that this four-year-old could recite the 23rd Psalm, so he, he asked her to do so. She stood up and said, The Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. She had the words a little mixed up, but had the right idea. This verse is both personal and provisional. We see divinity in relationship with humanity, the creature and the creator. Either the Lord is your shepherd, the source of all you need, or you are looking to other shepherds as your provider. And Matthew Henry, he puts it like this, if the Lord is truly your shepherd and you are lacking something, it is either not fit for you, it is not good for you, or you shall have it in due time. We're told it's very difficult to get sheep to lie lie down unless four requirements are met. They need to be free of fear. We had our, one of our granddaughters with us this summer for about a week and a half, and almost every night without fail when we tucked her in, she would say, is the door locked? She wanted to be free of fear before she could rest. The sheep need to be free of friction with their own kind. Maybe you've tried to sleep some night after a rough day. Maybe you had a run-in with someone or you had a relational issue with your spouse. They need to be free of parasites and annoyances. Maybe you've tried to work in the garden or you've tried to have a golf game when all those little gnats are flying around your head. It's hard to relax. It's hard to to rest under those circumstances. And one more thing, the sheep need to to know that uh, there's food nearby. They need to have their their tummies full. Kind of sounds like us a bit again. You know, we've all heard the phrase bedtime snack. Every afternoon, the shepherd would make a temporary corral He would use shrubs or something to make a corral for the sheep, and he would have one entrance, and he would actually lay in that entrance or sit in the entrance so the sheep coming in and going out would have to step over him literally. Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. Imagine yourself today sprawled out in a lush green pasture field with no bugs, no weeds, sun shining down, sky is blue, No financial problems, no relational issues, no sense of danger, no problems at all. A full stomach, really nothing on your agenda. It's hard to imagine a day like that. When the Lord is truly your shepherd, you can rest in him. He leads me beside still waters. And twice in this passage we read that he leads me. We're told that cattle you can drive, but sheep are not very drivable. Have you ever tried to follow someone maybe through a city? You've asked them directions, and they say, follow me. And you're following them closely, and then you come to a traffic light, and they get through on the green, and you're stopped at the red. And when you finally, the light finally turns green, and you go through, they're nowhere to be found. 
It's hard to follow someone like that. We're told sheep will not drink from fast-flowing or turbulent waters or streams. How often do we as God's children try to drink from things that are turbulent, things that are very busy, and uh, we end up more exhausted than ever trying to quench our thirst from those things? He will lead you to the most refreshing and peaceful streams if you will follow him. He restoreth my soul. Sheep aren't very good at looking after themselves. They need help and they need assistance. Kind of sounds like some of us men. Sometimes a sheep will fall on its back and it, it can't seem to get up without any help. The sheep will panic and uh, that is called what we call a cast sheep. David knew the agony of this. An aching heart, a saddened count, countenance, this feeling of being down. And in Psalm 43 and 5, the psalmist asks himself, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? You may be on your back today financially stretched, emotionally drained, physically exhausted, spiritually bankrupt, but the good news is that God, he is in the restoration business. You may find that speaking with a, a counselor or having a visit with your pastor may help, maybe reading a book, but only Jesus, let me say it again, only Jesus can restore your soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness in Isaiah 53 and 6. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Another verse says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. We like sheep are creatures of habit. You know, some of you come in to church each Sunday and you look for that very same pew. You eat the same cereal. You put on the same clothes every day. We get into ruts. Unfortunately, some of our ruts or habits are not always all that good. We're told that sheep left on their own will follow the same old trails, the same old paths. And left on our own, we are much the same, following after our own lusts and desires. Bad habits become ruts, and we can't seem to get free. Jesus wants to set you free. He wants to lead you to new and refreshing paths. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Some of you are in a valley today. It's long, it's deep, it's dark and uninviting. It's downright scary. And yet sometimes the shepherd will take the sheep there on purpose. In those valleys, it's often where the best foliage is found. As you look back on your valleys, often that is where you find the most comfort, the most nourishment, the most growth in your life. As a child, we used to travel to a camp in Pennsylvania. There were long tunnels. We would enter those tunnels under the mountains. They were long and they were dark. And finally, you would come out the other side and you would just drive into this most beautiful um, day where it was bright again. Don't miss the fourth word in this verse, through. Going through means there's an exit. It means your trials are temporary. You will come out the other side where the sun will shine again. The rod and the staff are part of the shepherd's limited equipment. The rod is a multifunctional tool used for correction, for protection, and for examination. In severe cases, the shepherd would take his rod and uh, a wayward sheep, he would take and break the leg of the sheep, and then he would bandage it up, and he would carry that sheep for a time till it would get back on its feet. God loves us so much that he will correct us. As each sheep would pass by the shepherd, he could also part the wool of the sheep and look for hidden things clinging to that sheep. Psalm 139, 23, and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart, I pray. The staff is much more like the Holy Spirit offering guidance, offering comfort, and drawing the sheep in close. Remember your journey is temporary, and also the words that thou art with me. Your journey will be temporary, and God will be with you in every situation. He will not leave you or ever abandon you. You prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. There's a story of a young child who was at the table with the family misbehaving, and the father said to the child, you sit over in the corner and eat your dinner. They overheard the child saying, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The shepherd would find some flat land higher up in the hills called the tableland where the sheep could feed. There's an old hymn that says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's tableland. But before taking the sheep to that tableland up in the mountains, the, the shepherd would go ahead and he would make sure there's water available. The shepherd would make sure that 
uh, all the poisonous weeds were pulled, and he would also lay down some minerals so the sheep could eat and be nourished. It was great, but the only problem with that all around was rim rock and ledges, great hideouts for the enemy, like coyotes, bears, and lions, ready to pounce. I remember years ago uh, being a chaperone on a mission trip with our young people from this church. We went to Jamaica, and we did many missions projects, but the one day we took the day off, we went to Duns River Falls. Maybe some of you have been there. Very wonderful place, lovely waterfall. The kids were having fun. They had all laid their backpacks uh, down uh, below the falls. And I stood there, and I seen a young man from the island, a native. He was circling those backpacks. He was lurking in the distance, just wondering if he could snatch one when nobody was looking. There was money. There was wallets. There were passports there, obviously. So I stood watch. Often when life is good, the enemy is lurking, just waiting for a chance to pounce. But the good shepherd, he is waiting. Uh, He is watching over you. He wants you to be able to feed without fear. He is standing guard, giving his angels watch over you every day. Also, he is presently preparing a table for you and I that is out of this world. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. I love this verse. Anyone remember the big fly sprayers that they used to spray the cattle with in the barns so the cows would not be annoyed when they were milking them? Well, in the summer, the sheep are bothered by many pests, such as flies, mosquitoes, and gnats. They tell us the nose fly is the worst. It will lay eggs, and the worm-like larva will work its way up into the sheep's sheep's head until the sheep becomes very angry, agitated, and in severe case, and start actually start banging its head against the rocks. We're told in severe cases the sheep will actually kill themselves. I'm sure there have been times in your life when you have felt like banging your head against a wall. Someone said, why do you bang your head against the wall? And the reply was, because it feels good when I quit. The shepherd would anoint the sheep's head with oil as a repellent to keep all these gnats and pests away from the sheep. He wants to anoint you today with oil to watch over you and to keep things away that are not healthy for you, things that annoy you. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I had the privilege of raising two teenage daughters, but in the wake of getting ready to go out, they could leave quite a trail, or should I call it a mess, behind. Sheep under mismanagement can leave behind a trail of destruction, actually ruin the land, but in bold contrast, we're told when they are well managed and guided by a good shepherd, they are beneficial to the land. They actually benefit the land in a great way. They leave a trail of goodness, a trail of mercy. If you are continually under the guidance of Jesus, the good shepherd, you will affect your world in a positive way. Goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. I finish this morning with a true story, the story of a a young pastor who finished seminary, and he thought before he took his first pastorate, before he took his first church, He would go and live in Israel for a year. He went to Israel, and he spent part of the time with a shepherd. One day he was speaking with the shepherd, and the shepherd said, let's go down to the lake country and feed the sheep. And so the shepherd had this call he would make to the sheep, something like, eeyaw. And when he did that, out of his flock of 1,500 to 2,000 sheep, they all lifted their heads, and they began to follow him. They went down to the lake country to feed the sheep, and as they got there, there was about eight to ten other shepherds with similar-sized flocks, 1,500 to 2,000 sheep each. And so they spent some time while the sheep were were grazing and and gaining nourishment. They spent some time talking with the other shepherds. Finally, one of the shepherds said, well, it's time I be going. It's quite a journey back. And and this, this shepherd had his own call. I don't know what it was, but he made this sound. And all of his sheep, 1,500 to 2,000, lifted their heads and began to follow. And then the next shepherd and the next shepherd until the pastor was standing there with the shepherd he had been working with. This shepherd said, uh, we better be going as well. And so he made his call, eeyaw, and all of his sheep lifted their heads and followed as well. This pastor looked back, and not one sheep was left out of those 20,000 sheep. And it was also noted that never once did a sheep follow the wrong shepherd. Quite a story, marvelous, really. My hope and prayer today is that you know Jesus, the Good Shepherd, that you recognize his voice, that when he calls your name, you lift your head 
and you willingly follow him. He wants today to be your protector, your provider, and your guide, not just today, but all through life, right until the end. Let us pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for the opportunity to share with our church family, with the flock today. I thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being one of the shepherds of this flock at Bethel. Lord, I pray that we would all look to you, including myself as the good shepherd, the true shepherd, the one that will help us, the one that will guide us through life. When we come to difficult passes, you know the way to go, God. And you will not go ahead of us and get and, and leave us behind, but Lord, you will wait for us, God. I pray for the one today that maybe does not know your voice, does not know you, is not part of your fold. I pray that they would turn to you and recognize the benefits of following you, Jesus, as the good shepherd. Bless our church family, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.